Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, son of a bitch, not you guys again. Alright, you want another tutorial? How about Tinker's Construct? Tinker's Construct is one of the mods that's in the Moon Quest mod pack, and this one is a little bit more, uh, well, there's a lot more in the Tinker's Construct mod than there is in the Miscraft mod. The Miscraft mod is complicated in the sense that you have an infinite Co uh, combinations of things. This is uh, complicated in the sense that you have a limited combination of things, and so I now have to explain the limited combination of things, whereas the other one, I only had to explain what you had to put together. So we're going to start with the first thing you, that you get with Tinker's Construct, and that is the materials and you book that you get. If you flip through all the pages, it tells you everything you need to know. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know, so it's not really important. But remember that if you take the yellow book, you can turn it into the red book, and the red book turns into the black book, so you will always have a copy of this book. So these are the three th main things that you're going to need to get started with Tinker's Construct. And you'll notice I have two things over here. This is just a crafting table, and you can actually make that by taking taking a normal crafting table and just putting it anywhere and it'll turn into this. A crafting station is cool because if I put something there, walk away and come back, it's still there so it doesn't fall on the floor. And then this is a tool forge which is an upgraded version of the tool station. So if you have the tool forge, you're not going to need the tool station. Your tool station lets you repair, modify and build tools such as the pickaxe, the shovel and some of the more interesting ones such as a battle axe or frying pan. Your stencil table lets you make stencils that you can then put inside a pattern chest which can then be accessed by the part builder to build the parts for use within the tool station or tool forge. You see how that kind of goes in a circle there? The second thing you're going to need to do is make a smeltery. Now, I don't know why, but all the smelting information ends up in the third book that you get, not the second book. But it's all pretty simple. You need to first make grout, which is sand, gravel, and clay, which you can smelt into bricks which you can craft into brick blocks, which you can then craft into your smeltery. Now your smeltery has to be exactly 3x3 three three with stuff on the outside of it. It can have corners if you want, but it doesn't need them. It can be one tall, or it can be a million tall, I think. It says there's no limit, but could it be a million tall? The world may never know. Now to make a smeltery, it's actually pretty easy. You only need two vital pieces of information. A seared tank, and a smeltery controller. After that, you can either put seared bricks on the outside, or you can put smeltery drains. Now, to make sure your smeltery is actually working, when you plug everything in, this smeltery controller block will actually be glowing with some little particles coming off of it. If it's not doing that, you've done it wrong. What you need to do after that is put lava in this tank. If you don't put lava in this tank, it's not going to be operable. By making it bigger, you're actually going to increase the amount of storage with inside of it, so if you want to smelt more things faster, just make your smeltery taller. To get the liquid out of your smeltery, you're going to have to make some smeltery drains, and you're going to have to make some seared faucets that are then over either casting basins or casting tables. We'll get to those later. For softer materials, such as flint, paper, or wood, you can actually put them directly into the part builder, and then build the tools that you want from that. However, if you want to make your tools out of metals, you're going to have to make casts instead of patterns. I mean, you can't uh, meld tools with your hand. Fucking, you can't meld metal with your hands. To do that, you're going to need to make something called aluminum brass, which is aluminum and copper at a 3 to 1 ratio. As you can see, the two mix to create molten aluminum brass. I have put this tool rod on the table, and once I right-click this channel, it'll pour down in here, and once it cools off, I now have myself a tool rod cast. Using the aforementioned process and your tool station or forge, you can make your tools with mix and matched parts. Why? Well, each tool needs parts, and each part has its own attribute. The book, the red book, goes over that in pretty good detail. For example, reinforced has a 10% chance per level of not using durability. Here's my tool, a rapier. Manilian, while the top dog in most aspects, has shit durability, and I could have used different materials instead of all Manilian to gain a better durability. Or maybe I just had an excess of Manilian, which would never happen, and I wanted to make all Manilian tools. Does that mean my durability is just forever gonna have to be shit? No, I can still increase the durability with upgrades. There's tons of upgrades covered in the Red Book, so instead of going over them all, I'll just read a few. Actually, ah, oh shit, where did I put my red book? I don't see it anywhere. Well, that's fine. If you ever lose track of your red book, you can make a book 
by using a blank pattern and paper, and again, just crafting it into the book you need. You have some basic modifiers like diamond, which will add some extra durability and increase the mining level. You've got redstone, which increases speed. You've got moss, which, in uh, which will auto repair your tool. You've got lava crystals, which will auto smelt. Those are how you make moss and lava crystals, and so on and so forth. This red book also explains the tools. Now while you have your basic tools such as a pickaxe and a shovel and a hatchet, you've also got some interesting tools such as a mattock, or a rapier, or a frying pan. Nom 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 nom. One more thing the smeltery is used for, which isn't actually tool, is something called clear glass. If you put sand in a smeltery and wait for it to smelt up, and then take that molten glass and channel it into a casting basin, You now have clear glass. Pretty good looking. Clear glass also has the ability to be picked back up once you mine it. The last thing I need to mention about a smeltery is that it doubles the amount of ingots you can get from one piece of ore. Now a couple of non-tool related things. As you'll notice, I have a bunch of basically similar objects over here that look like half slabs. What you can do is you can actually craft these if you just felt like walking all over your stuff by placing said object in the crafting table. It basically just chops the legs right off of it, so you can place it on the ground. The only one that doesn't apply for is the crafting station, in which you have to take three crafting tables in a slab-like formation to make six crafting stations. Because, you know, six you need six crafting stations. One, that is not enough. You need at least six, if not more. Hambone. Another thing that you can make that's not tool related is called an ess essence extractor. An essence extractor is pretty darn nifty. If you right click on it with levels in your inventory, with levels inside you, if you right click it and you have levels, all the levels will be taken and stored within the essence extractor. You'll notice it said total essence 895 and stored levels 31.01. .01. If I right click it again, sorry, if I left click it, I will then get a crystal with my, uh, the exact amount of experience that I had. I can then take this and put it in a chest somewhere for safekeeping. When I want my levels back, I just nom on this delicious looking essence crystal and get all of my experience back. There's absolutely no loss. You can do this as many times as you want. Two more nifty things are the igniters and the drawbridges. The igniters are basically uh, gooey list little things that you place on the ground and when activated by redstone, ow, they turn on fire. A drawbridge is a block that looks like this. You can disguise it by putting a block in on this side and you can tell it what block to extend with on this side. As you'll notice on the wall, we have some torches that are gray. These torches are uh, torches added by Tinker's Construct and you can actually make these with stone rods, which are easier to make because they're just cobblestone. So no more do you have to waste wood. Another thing that Tinker's Construct adds are bushes, such as iron, gold, copper, tin, aluminum, and essence bushes. Now, these bushes all have to grow underground, but essence bushes, while found underground, can be brought above ground and planted. A knapsack is a really nifty thing, which only takes iron tough tool rods, gold ingots, and leather. When you craft a knapsack, you can put it in this slot on this tab, and this will give you a, a third tab called Knapsack. This is basically just extra storage and you can do whatever you want with it. Another thing you can make is called the Golden Head. Some say consuming the head of a fallen foe strengthens the blood. A Golden Head is pretty easy to craft. You can either use a player head with gold nuggets or you can use an apple with gold ore berry. On this tab you'll notice I also had heart canisters. Heart canisters are kind of an expensive thing to craft needing empty canisters which you can make with aluminum, miniature red heart, which you can only find in dungeons, necrotic bone, which only come from mob drops, and jeweled apples, which take four diamonds around an apple. You can also eat a jeweled apple for 60 seconds of haste, strength, absorption, resistance, and for hunger. Heart canisters stack up to 10, and will actually give you extra life, which is why my hearts down there are yellow. So that means I have 20 hearts instead of the normal 10, but then I ate an apple, so I actually have 30 hearts. I have like a whole shit ton of hearts, I don't even know what to do with them. Next we have Pungy Sticks. 
These things are pretty nifty. They only take sugar cane, and you get five when you craft them. If you take punji sticks and click right click, you get one stick on the ground. When you step on it, it'll hurt you a little bit. If you right click that same area again, you'll put two there. Right click, and you can stack all the way up to five. Each punji stick you add does a little bit more damage. Five punji sticks in a square will do up to 2.5 hearts of damage, as well as add slowness for as long as you're on them. Brownstone is a pretty cool one, but unfortunately I don't think it shows up in any of the books, nor does it show up in any eye. Brownstone you make by smelting tin and gravel together. If you take brownstone and use the tool chisel on it, you can make brownstone road. As you'll notice, when you run on brownstone road, you run extremely quickly. Now I've gone over what most of the mod has to offer, and if I didn't touch upon something that's either one, because it's not really that important, or two, because it wasn't covered in the wiki, which is kind of iffy, and I didn't really know what it does. For example, landmines, who knows? Oak barricades, I can make them, you can make them, which is some logs, but they're kind of an aesthetic thing, and I'm not really sure they serve a purpose. Some things, like gray stained glass, you're pretty much smart enough to figure out on your own. And a lot of the fun of this mod is putting all the pieces and parts together to figure out how to make the best tool for your use. So I'm not really going to show you how to make a lot of these tools. Plus, if you really need to know, the book does explain everything. Most of the books explain how to craft things. So you can always just check those, and you can always just craft them if you really need to. Anyways, I'm just going to leave you with an image of some uh, villagers dying in here and turning into... Uh, liquefied emerald that you cannot do anything with